Hello, this is Danielle Zana. I'm going to talk about uh, my extraterrestrial mother and an animal. Well, apparently, I met her when I was 11 years old, and um, for the first time, I was the closest of actually being with her on this planet. Well, basically, I've also been doing a bit of research. Um, to find out if anyone or anybody has um, experienced or witnessed um, similar um, type of um, person as her. Um, when I was 11 years old, basically, I'll just try and sum up this sort of story so I can get on with the, the main part of the video. Um, when I was 11 years old, I went to bed and I was sleeping. Then I woke up and I saw a bright light shine through the window. Then um, from my bedroom I saw this beam walk through the wall. Well, the, the light was behind the wall, which obviously must have been a spaceship. And then um, she um, walked through the wall and then walked through the window and then sat in my bed. And then she, then I got up and then. Um, um, she asked me to sit on my lap, and as she was, as I was sitting on my lap, she told me a whole lot of stuff which I can't remember. And that time, eleven years old, was too advanced uh, for me to understand. And at the same time, she had all these holograms that were flying around my bedroom, and um, one of them. Um, Particular, which I'll mention, was um, World War Three. Then um, she was actually uh, naked. Uh, she had sort of like these silk pins, like a cloak type thing, yeah, but they blew up in the wind like wings. And um, and she sort of had a, a, a light skin. And was glowish, or maybe yeah, was glowish. And she stroked my hair and she told me that um, she was like a mother, a guardian of some sort. But uh, the way we were talking, it wasn't speech. It's just like telepathy in the sense it's no words. Um, it was all like emotions. And then um. My brother woke up from the instant and he thought I had the light on in my bedroom and um, he tried to get in my room to try and um, tell me to turn off the light and go to bed. But he couldn't get in my room because Emilania had um, locked the, the door. And, um, and the thing is, um, um, and then later on, later on, um, and then I went up, and walked to the glass window, walked out, and then um, went to the wall and got into a spaceship, and then flew up um, to the um, stars. And uh, what was left uh, the next morning, because I told my mother the. the the story and uh, mother said um, it was possibly an angel. Um, oh, going back, well, the being was she was actually naked, um, hermaphrodite, and um, spoke between probably like my voice, uh, like sort of like a um, feminine mixed up voice, and um, Um, and she's seven feet tall, and her shoe size was size twelve, which I'll get into later. How I got her shoe size. Well, um, I told my mum the story. My mother said she's an angel, and then um, as I was telling my mother um, about 
um, telling my mother about her. Um, she saw the footprints in the flower bed, and that didn't decide to take the footprint costs, and um, now I kept them in my room. And for quite, a, I think for about like nine years, I had them at the, the footprints, but they, my mother. Because my mother was very religious and that she kind of thinks uh, the Nanya was a demon type thing. So she took them and she put them in the um, the laundry, uh, the footprints. And um, and then from when we moved, they disappeared. And um, I got various theories on how why they got this, why they disappeared. Because I wish I had them today, um, because there were there are evidence of the the, the event. Um, I've actually met an Anya, um quite recently. Um, most often I meet her in, in sleep or dreams. Sometimes I feel there might not actually be dreams, but. Um, I, Sort of like consciousness transfers um, to the planet, and um, they are going to another body, looks like, was, and, uh, and that's the last time I, I, I get very homesick or upset <clears throat> when I go into this bit because coming back here is really upsetting. Okay, so now I'm going to go in a different bit, um, a different uh, video of other people who've experienced. Most people have my, um, heard my story about Nananya. Um, first of all, um, as well, when she left her spaceship at the time when I was 11 years old, and um, there was a sort of like a, a six points burnt in the grass, and she told me that would actually. Limit your movement was actually the way you Um, and then I don't know why or what, but, but um, yeah. So basically, I'm also going to um, say something that um, um, Elohim is those that come from the stars, and um, it doesn't, um, it's not a specific race. Which species? Um, it's actually the definition incorporates all beings it's from the stars that come. So um, there's a lot of misinformation about that, um, and I do not support galactic racism, <laughs> as my friend in the um, cosmic um, view. Um, says that uh, she doesn't support cosmic ra um, galactic racism as well, um, and which I've noticed well in um, even the Raylan room, they just focus on Elohim being these um, four feet tall people um, only, where there's actually the truth of the matter is um, the galaxy is a community. Of a variety of things, and um, I don't like to see race um, and um, everyone is unique in that. So now I'm going to go into the bits.